and welcome to the Pro Yaki Record. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. I'd like to start off this first podcast by wishing you a Happy New Year. I'd like to lead off with a bit of an introduction. I started writing about Japanese baseball on the internet in 1995 with, on my personal homepage space with a segment I called Pro Yaki This Week. I kept this up until just before our second child was born in 1998. By then there were a couple of other people writing on the internet in English, so I didn't feel as though I was abandoning the English-speaking pro Yaku community. But being away really showed me that I really did have a desire to continue writing. So in 2001, I started up JapaneseBaseball.com, a set of forums for interacting with uh, pro Yaku fans, and basically having a conversation about pro Yaku in English. However, the past several years has seen the site kind of decay due to uh, my own personal neglect as I've been very busy trying to earn a living. And so far as trying to earn a living is concerned, this past year has not been one of the best. However, it has been a very enriching year in that I took up the Creative 366 project on Google+, whereby I basically took a picture and uploaded it on a daily basis. Now, I've had a DSLR camera for many years. However, it was during this project that I really learned how to use it, as well as the mysterious art of post-processing photographs. So I figure, if my photography can get better over the course of a year by taking pictures daily, then it follows that other creative skills can mature in a similar fashion. Even Judge John Hodgman, in the role of literary critic, says that producing great quantities of writing is better than great quality of writings for beginning writers. And all of my past experience with writing about Japanese baseball confirms this. So, that brings me to the Pro Yaku record. It is my goal for the year to keep a record of Pro Yaku topics on a daily basis and to gather these together and produce a video podcast on a weekly basis. Video production is one skill that I would really like to develop. Exploring the potential engagement and collaboration that Google Plus Hangouts offers and integrating that into a, the podcast is another. As a frequent guest on John Gibson's Japan Baseball Weekly podcast, it's been my tendency to rattle off a bunch of numbers in the most boring way possible. I really need to learn how to present data-filled studies in a way that doesn't put people to sleep. It's my hope that the multimedia nature of a video podcast can help me in this major deficiency of mine. So there you go. That's my past, present, and what I hope to be future, complete with motivations. While this first show is a solo production, I fully plan on incorporating you, watchers. So, get ready to participate. News is no longer a one-way show. And speaking of news, I've prepared a couple of items for this week's show. The first news item is probably the biggest to come up in the past week. It was the announcement of Hideki Matsui's retirement from baseball. Four out of five pages of Nikon Sports on December 28th were dedicated to Matsui. Five of the six baseball pages on the December 29 issue were dedicated to Matsui. My RSS feeds and Google Reader were also full of Matsui-related news. So, when a story is this big and is covered by so many sites in English, I feel that I don't really have much to cover it further. There truly is nothing more I can say that hasn't already been said. In fact, it doesn't look like I'm the only one who doesn't have anything to say on a particular matter, as Nikon Sports completely missed Kato Commissioner saying that he would like to open the 2014 season in North America. 
I'd like to get to that maybe in a later episode. There's no doubt that Matsui is part of baseball history, and he will make one, if not both, of the Hall of Fames between Japan and the U.S. in the near future. However, I'd like to talk about a different future, a future prospect, that is. On December 22nd, Dakten's Makun, Masahiro Tanaka, signed a three-year Incentive Lane contract for a minimum of yonoku yen, that is 400 million yen, per year with the Eagles. However, there is an escape clause which will allow him to be posted as early as the end of this coming season. At 400 million yen going into his seventh season, Makun has become the third highest seventh year player in Japanese baseball history behind Yu Darvish and Ichiro Suzuki, two players who have already taken the major league route. So it's a safe bet that there will be a lot of scouts in Sendai this coming season. And that is going to wrap up this first episode of the Pro Yaku Record. I'd like to thank you for joining me. If you have any suggestions of topics that you'd like to cover here in the future, please write them down in the comments below. If you'd like to see this curtain behind me turn into something a little more baseball, I'd gladly accept PayPal donations to Stars at markjapanesebaseball.com to fund a green screen and maybe some better lighting. Hope to see you again soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.